So today I thought it'd be fun to talk about what Unix pipes are and actually show a practical example of how to use them. So if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by some point in the near future, so any help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So what a pipe basically is within a Unix based system or any system that uses them, but mainly you're going to encounter them within Unix or Linux or BSD or Mac OS, any of those sorts of systems. Pretty much what they do is it'll let you take the output of one program and then send that to the input of another. So that might sound confusing as it stands, but I'm going to show you a few examples and then we're going to actually work through a practical example because a lot of the time I've seen, especially when you get taught something like this in university or within a high school context, they will give you this very, very abstract example or this example that you don't really see any practical use for. So we'll just, I'll bring up an example like that and then we can work through a proper one. So typically, an example you'd get is something like this. So let's say we want to do some text filtering, for example. So if we run man grep, that'll bring up the man page for grep. So what if we wanted to do something like search for every single occurrence of the word grep within the grep page for man? So to do that, we can use a pipe. So if we then pipe this man page, so that will pipe all of that text, it'll send all of that text as the output of that command to another program. So we could then send that to a program like grep itself. So then what that will do is that will run grep on that text. So that would be the same as if you were to say, you, you might have done this before. So you would run like echo, you'd put a bunch of text, then you would send that to, sorry, then you'd send that to grep and then you could then do filtering on that. So if we bring up my proper example again, so what we're going to do is we're going to run grep on the man page for grep. So you run this and you get all this output and that's all well and good. You see how a pipe works, but running it like this, you don't really get a practical idea of what you can actually do with pipes. Like sure, you can do text filtering, but there is so much more that you can use pipes for that just aren't explained when you just show a really abstract example like this. So what we're going to be working through today is we're going to build up a very simple application launcher to load up terminal applications within a terminal. Because like with your default application launcher, like I could run HTOP in here and it's just not going to do anything because it's not actually running in a terminal. So that's not very helpful. So we could build up a system where we can then take some input and then pipe that into whatever terminal I'm using and then open it up in that terminal. So this is actually a fairly simple bit of script, but it is really powerful and it should give you some examples of what you can actually do with pipes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this file that I made beforehand because I didn't feel like doing it on camera. So this is just a very simple file with the list of programs that I want to be able to open. So we've got HTOP, CalCurse, NVIM, LF, Ranger, Joplin, and Transmission Remote CLI. You could have anything in here. They don't even all have to be terminal applications because you can open up GUI applications from your terminal. So they'll still work if you want to have something like Firefox, maybe IceCat, VS Code, whatever you want to have in here. But for the sake of this example, we are just working with terminal applications. So we'll save that. Just give it a name that's easy to remember. I'm going to call it shell programs. Okay. So the first thing we can do here is we're going to work with cat. So if we cat out shell programs, then that will just list everything out to the terminal. Okay. So there's our first step. So what we can do with this is we can pipe this into my favorite program D menu. So if we run cat with shell programs, and then we run D menu. So D menu is a, it's the standard application launcher on when you're using i3 and it's a basically a very simple prompt that'll list out everything you pipe into it and it'll use by default new line characters as the delimiter. So if we pipe that in and we open up D menu, then what that will do is it'll take all of this text, it'll send it into D menu and because they're all separated by new lines, each line will be treated as another option for D menu. So if we wanted to run, say, LF, 
that will then print out the text. And that is one of the really useful things about dmenu. So we can take this text that is output by dmenu and then send it into another program. But before we do that, we'll just make some neat little changes to this just so it's a bit easier to use. So I will change the prompt text for dmenu and we can call it something like open. So I'll put that in quotation marks. I'm pretty sure you have to. And if we run that now, now that just changes the prompt text. That's not too important about the pipes themselves, but I just wanted to have it there just so I could have some idea of what program I'm actually opening. Okay, so now that we've got this bit of text being output by dmenu, what can we do from here? So let's say we wanted to open up, for example, Joplin, which is a markdown note-taking program. So we've got this text here. So how do we get from this point to being able to open it up in a terminal? And that's actually really simple. So in your bash RC or your ZSHRC, you've probably got a line in there that says, sorry, not your bash RC, your bash profile. You've probably got a line in there. I don't know why I opened up LF. That was stupid. Um, bash underscore profile that you're setting your terminal environment variable in. And if you're not, then you can just manually write out the name of your terminal. So I've got mine defined in here as ST. So you might be using something like iterm, console, whatever other terminals exist. I'm not gonna list out every terminal, I'd be here for hours. Anyway, so a lot of terminals have this option for them where you can actually open up programs and then close the, the terminal as soon as the program is closed or is finished executing. So if we run the man page for ST, I believe the option is dash E and it is fairly similar in many terminals. So here we go. So dash E and then command. ST executes the command inside of the shell. If this is used, it must be the last option of the command. Doesn't matter. This is the same in item or this is the same in X term and X RXVT. This option is only intended for compatibility and all other remaining arguments are used as a command even without it. So there's a lot of terminals that have this option. If your terminal doesn't have dash E as an option, then it might have something similar. I'm not sure what other terminals have, but most of them have the ability to open up a terminal with a command that's being run. Find out whatever option your terminal uses and then go with that. So we're gonna be using dash E because I'm working with ST. So if we bring up that command we were working with, the next thing we can do is we're gonna use one of my other favorite programs, that is Xargs. So what Xargs lets you do is it'll let you take the input of the program and then put it into the command that you're going to run. So it can do other things, but that is the general use for it. So if we use Xargs, we spell it correctly, and then the dash I option, dash I is the string replacement, and then we give it a symbol to replace with. I typically use something that I'm definitely not gonna have in the command. And something like percent is usually a fairly safe option to use. And then we're going to run the command. So if we do dollar terminal, that is how we access the environment variable. And then dash E. So we're going to run my terminal with the dash E option. And then in, in strings, just in case I wanna give the program some options when I run it, we can then put in this percent sign. So now when we run this, we'll see something interesting happen. So this opens up. So let's say we wanna run something like, for example, LF. So we put that in and now LF opens. So we have now just made a very, very simple application launcher. So I could take this script and then put this into a script file so I don't have to continually write it out. And then I could maybe put a, I don't know, I could alias it or something, or maybe just give it a short name. I could even put it into a bash function. So using pipes like this, you can get a lot of work done. And I think that a lot of the basic examples of how to use pipes definitely neglect some of these really cool things you can do because sure, text filtering is really cool, but there's only so much you can do with it. And there's so many more uses outside of text filtering that you can use pipes for. You can, for example, We've got this program that I've done here, but I've got some other examples where I've made use of lots of pipes. So if we go into my scripts file, my scripts folder, we've got this one, where is it? Multi-monitor, I believe? Yes. So this is how I set up my multi-monitor configuration. It's basically the same script. It's just using echo instead of cat. So I'm echoing the options in. So if we run 
Uh, that was mod X on my system. Then it will open this up. I'm not gonna run any of this because it'll disable or do something to the screen that I've got OBS on. So I don't wanna do that, but it does basically the same thing. So we're taking the text, we're putting it into D menu, and then we're putting it into Xargs. And this basic form, you can do a lot of stuff with. I've probably got something else in here that also is pretty cool. So, ah, pie shell, for example. This is a very similar one, but I'm doing something a bit different with it. So this one, I'm opening up the Python shell and putting a bit of text into it and running that. So if I want to do something like a basic calculator, so I've got that on mod Y. So if we do something like two times five, that'll then pipe that into the Python shell. And then it uses another Xargs to take the result of the Python shell and then puts that into a notification so I can actually see what the result is. So we can see up here that it then finishes that math. I've got a video that I've done on that script up on that corner, so go check that out if you wanna go see it. So this is only just scratching the surface of what you can do with pipes. You can chain them as long as you want, as long as you need to keep filtering stuff. So I don't have any crazy long examples, but I know there are some out there. I think Luke Smith has got a really long one for the way that he does torrents or something. I think I might've pinched part of it. Let's see if I have it. So, oh no, I did it in a much simpler way. So he's got this crazy way to filter them and work it out. I've got this bit of a much shorter way. And also he does something similar with emails. I might put that video down below if you wanna go check that out. But for example here, this is some text filtering. So this will count how many packages I've got. Oh sorry, no, this will count how many torrents I've got. I've got a similar one for packages. It echoes in my torrent program transmission, and then it will find the downloading and uploading, and then it just counts the lines that are downloading and uploading. And for text filtering, that is as complicated as a lot of things need to get. You can obviously do far more than this, and I'm sure lots of people have. So if you do have an idea, then try it out, and maybe you actually learn something new. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you've learned something from this video, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you need some help with something and I can help out, then let me know and I'll see what I can do. So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. And if you want to get notifications when videos come out, go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there. Down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. And also my Discord where I'm far more likely to respond. And I think that's pretty much it. If you want to see other videos like this, go check out the playlist this video is in. So yeah, that is pretty much everything for me and I'm out.